Uh, I'm not doing anything new. I'm just new. I'm just examining this C for a moment. What is this C? This is the exchange value of the C goods times the C goods. Okay. In other words, very simple. This is the unit value of a machine, $1,000, you know, one machine, or two machines. So this is $2,000 if it were two machines. $1,000 per machine times two machines is $2,000. All right. First, Marx provides an eloquent, beautiful discussion description of what's happening in capitalism of his day in volume one of Capital, which I've assigned to you, which is that, my goodness, that's going up. I mean, it's not the only one that notices this, okay? There are others as well. But the growth of capitalism from the 1750s all the way to the world, uh, throughout its entire history, but to, <laughs> 1750, you know, to, to 1850, this first industrial revolution, then 1850 to World War I, this, this uh, second industrial revolution, Marx captures the first part of it, is a robust expansion of machines. That's mechanization. Okay. And he describes quite eloquently how the division of labor and the specialization of task change within factories as human beings get hooked up to these machines. I mean, this, that just goes up. And therefore, this pushes C up, okay? So C over C plus V rises in part because the quantity of machines goes up. There's no question about that. On the other hand, it's also true that this falls. The unit value of those machines fall. So there's no, there's a, there's two different things going on as a result of the same process. Capitalist competition forces each and every capital to buy more machines. In, in the language of e economics, the capital labor ratio goes up steadily. On the other hand, the very competition that results from that rise in the capital labor ratio cheapens the C in, you know, in iron and steel and machine making and so forth, etc., which then means that the other part of the fraction is falling, and hence this is pushing it down. So some people in the tradition say, well, this arrow always is going to exceed that arrow. It's possible in any, during any particular period that may occur, but it's also possible it doesn't occur, and this could be going in that direction. Okay? You can begin to think of the cheapening of C's, which occurred throughout capitalist history, to see the importance of this as well as this. My, my point being here that this is being pushed in two different directions as a result of this. So the result is a bit ambiguous in terms of what's happening to this, this, this index of these two uh, different forces, okay? You gotta add to this the V. Let me just do this. So the V over here is the exchange value per unit use value of the V goods times, this is the real wage part of it. Okay, this is the unit value. Well, the history of capitalism is a fall in this. Can you think of any industry in which the V goods have fallen more than agriculture? There is a massive wage good industry in which there's been a steady rise in the productivity of labor due to mechanization with the result of, yes, a falling rate of profit for farmers, resulting in the United States, the state having intervened to save those farmers, but also cheaper food. Okay, so the price of food in the states, the unit value of food falls. On the other hand, I'm gonna do what I just did over here. The real wage goes up in the states. There's no ambiguity. That is, up until uh, recently, the 1980s, <coughs> 
for, for as long as we've had data in the states, the real wage of workers rises steadily. Now, you can ask the question, is it possible for this to outweigh this? For sure! It's possible if this outweighed this, that the V would rise, the rate of exploitation would fall, and that would dampen the rate of profit. I think it's, it's an argument one can make in the United States. It hasn't gone like that. This has outweighed this, and hence the V has been pushed down, and the S over V has gone up. But you might ask, let's go back here. You might ask, look, in our language, what overdetermines this? Well, everything overdetermines the use of machines. Okay? Competition shapes it. Credit shapes it. Knowledge shapes it. There are many, many overdeterminants. And I think all those forces together, I think the argument of people is quite correct, is that the uh, capital labor ratio rises because the K rises, rises, rises. No, I don't have any question about that. But that also means the possibility of robust cheapening of C. Let's go over here. What overdetermines this? Well, lots of stuff. Unions shape that. The culture shapes that. You know, the, the culture in the United States of that you all, uh, in order to be successful, you have to consume more. The, the consumerist culture that we have in the States pushes this up. Unions push it up and so forth. Labor market pushes this up. No question about that. Is it possible that this could outweigh this? Yes. But I think the argument here is that the capitalism itself produces such robust competition that it pushes this down. So I think on net, this goes up. And I'm a bit I am uncertain on this side what's going on. So, uh, you know, in terms of the C, because yes, this is very robust, but this is going up, I, I'm not sure. So I think that the total impact on the rate of profit is, you know, is that. At any particular moment, I don't want to lose it. At any particular moment, to go back to our epistemology, a capitalist can produce a thought concrete, at any particular moment, showing in that thought concrete that one of these forces outweighs the other. So at any particular moment, the, capital, uh, the th Marxists can intervene, produce an understanding of the economy in which, let's say, this is going up so dramatically during Marxist day that it's outweighing everything else in the economy, so the net effect is a falling rate of profit and then the possibility of recession. For sure. I have no, ar no problem with that kind of argument. Okay? But I think it's problematic to, be, to argue that it's necessarily the result through always that the rate of profit will inevitably fall because of you know, what I just showed you. I think it, a, a more uh, uh, appropriate analysis on this is the rate of profit exists like everything else in contradiction, although at any moment someone can produce a theori you know, theoretical result that's going up or going down or whatever. Okay? So we have the result here that it's possible for the cheapening of C, possible, to offset the tendency for the rate of profit to fall so the rate of profit doesn't and the capitalist competition, uh, I'm sorry, then capitalist expansion continues. So you got, you got two, I don't want to lose it now, you got two results here, okay, for this, for what Marx is showing in this uh, uh, craziness of capitalism, these ups and downs that we experience. On one hand, capitalist competition results or propels the economy into a recession. Why? Because each and every capitalist and each and every industry is increasing its composition of capital and that's driving that rate of profit down. On the other hand, this offsetting tendency is the very driving down of the, of the uh, rate of profit is also a driving down of unit value of these goods, the C and V, which is pushing the rate of profit up. So the economy which is the totality of these different movements. The rate of profit in the economy, which is the rate of profit in the C industry and the rate of profit in the V industry. So I got to weight these two things because they, they may not have the same weight in the total economy. If I take the surplus value as a proportion of the total value added here. So this would be in the C industry, this would be in the V industry. The V industry, 
the sea industry. So I, I'm just weighting them by their surplus values. The total, this is the total value added by the workers. Then I have the following, in this kind of weighted average. I have these things being pushed down and pushed up, pushed down, pushed up, and therefore the rate of profit in the economy exists in contradiction. It is being pushed in different directions. So at the conclusion, that which we think is a wonderful uh, machine, capitalism, capable of de delivering vast wealth, absolutely, is a machine, according to this, which is out of control. It's the machine, an automobile, that's nothing governing it. There's no governor on it. It's a machine that can veer into expansion, wonderful, euphoria. It can, a machine that can vary into to contraction, depression. It's a machine that is suffering in this, this, this bipolar way from this euphoria and this uh, recession. That's not a happy machine in which human beings might want to live. That's the second criticism of, of Marx of capitalism. The first one being class exploitation, and the second one being it's really out of control. Let me stop there, and I will see you next time.